So the next cognitive function I'm going to talk about is perception. So I said this is our uh, systems, our brain systems that enable us to, to see, to hear, to perceive the world and therefore uh, to understand it and allow us to interact with uh, things in the world. So if we take um, visual perception first, uh, so we can think about, of course, our eyes um, and the information coming from the outside world to our eyes traveling to our, to our brain. And what we know is, in fact, that, that information travels first to the back of the brain, to, to the occipital lobes of, of the brain. Um, and then that information, in a sense, travels uh, forward to other parts of the brain. So uh, what we're doing, of, of course, at first is just to simply to, to see the world, to see things in the world, um, and our brain recognizing those those things in the in the world, but we have to then understand those things. So to recognize what something is, and what its function is. So for example, if I if I take take this, well, I can see I can see it, and I can see that it's it's a white thing, uh, and it's it's sort of shaped. It's got a shape. It's it's round at the top. So part of my brain is simply recognizing or or uh, noting the. The, uh, the size and the shape and the form and the, and the colour. But then I can recognise that, well, I've, I've seen one of these before. OK, so and in fact, uh, I know what it is. I know what it's for. OK, it's, it's a thing for, for drinking out of. And I know its name as well. It's, it's a mug. So in each of those stages of, of recognising, understanding and naming this thing, um, my brain is using different parts, uh, different parts in order to do though, each of those different functions. So, of course, what that means is that actually with a brain injury, different parts of those uh, functions may be uh, impaired. So, for example, um, uh, if my occipital lobe uh, is damaged, then I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to see it at all. But it may not be if my occipital lobe is, is uh, intact, but I have some damage further, further forward from, from there. It's possible that I could, I could see this, but not really understand what it is. I couldn't interpret it. So I might see and be able to describe its shape, but I couldn't understand what it was. I, didn't, I wouldn't know that it was a mug. I wouldn't know what a mug was for. Or I could see it. I could understand what it is. I know what it's for, but I can't uh, recall or say uh, its name, so I'd have a naming problem. So we can see that actually just in that simple, what feels like a simple process of, of seeing something, recognising it and, and being able to, to know what it is and, and say its name, there are actually many different uh, brain systems uh, working that have to work uh, together. And similarly, of course, I know where it is. So I know what it is, but I also know where it is, and where it is in space. Um, and, and again, different parts of my brain are involved in uh, knowing where it is from knowing what it is. And of course, knowing where it is is critical because I have to be able to reach out and, and, and take it. If you like. So I can reach and hold. And in, again, in that simple uh, action of just reaching to, I can go straight to, to the object, take hold of it, uh, and so on. So our brain systems in, in perception are required to both to see and to perceive the world, but also to enable me to interact in a, in a physical way with that with, with the world. And in the same way with, with visual things, like the, the same is happening with, with auditory things. So I, I hear things in the world, I hear sounds, um, and I, in, I have to be able to interpret those. So that could be speech sounds, but it could be the sounds of other objects. And, and I recognise what those, what those sounds are, what those noises are, those, and, I, and I can uh, interpret them. So perception is about our ability to not just to see or hear, but to, to perceive, and to understand and to interact with uh, things, in the, things in our world.